Hello and welcome to Frankly Speaking, where we dive deep into regional headlines. I to speak with leading policymakers and business leaders. I am Katie Jensen. A landmark philosophy conference took place in Saudi Arabia this month, looking for solutions to some of the world's biggest challenges. From how global leaders can deal with stunted economic growth, geopolitical chaos and the devastating effects of climate change. With philosophy banned until recently in the kingdom, on this week's episode of Frankly Speaking, we catch up with one of the event's top speakers, Dr. Joseph Cohen, the Professor of Philosophy at the University College of Dublin, to ask about the significance of this major event being held right now and how to ensure the discussions have a major impact in our everyday lives. Dr. Cohen, thank you for joining us today on Frankly Speaking. Now, we have seen sweeping reforms across Saudi Arabia in recent years. So, frankly speaking, how does it feel to be speaking at a philosophy conference in a country which until recently was banning the study of philosophy? Well, that, that's an excellent question. And really, it, uh, it, speaks, it speaks, first of all, to, the, to the, the, the wave of openness that we're feeling right now in, in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. To have a philosophy conference, and this is our second edition of the philosophy conference in Riyadh, is, is a true sign of, of opening. But I'd like to add that it's not only Saudi Arabia opening up and within this 2030 vision, it's also the opportunity for international speakers, international philosophers, scientists, academics to discover, to discover a world. I believe the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia has very much something to give to the world. And it is important for us as academics to engage in this openness and discover with Saudi Arabia what it has to give, how it can give, how we can create international relationships with other academic institutions uh, in, 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 the greater, in the greater world uh, for the interest of all. And I think you raise a very interesting point there, as this year's event has highlighted philosophy as a field of study that is relevant not only to philosophers, but also to scientists, historians and astronomers. Now, many of the people at the event have been there for the first time in the kingdom. I know you've been there previously. In fact, you were speaking at the very conference last year. But how does Saudi Arabia compare to the impressions that you personally previously had? Well, I mean... In, in a certain manner, Saudi Arabia, for many international academics, myself included, uh, we was a, was something of a of a secret, something something still to be discovered, so, something still to be explored. The first impressions a lot of my colleagues from from international universities uh, get is is oh wow, what's opening up here? What's happening there? And this, this feeling, this first impression, so to speak, has triggered something very interesting philosophically. What it's triggered is the possibility to come to Saudi and almost test, almost experiment. You see, when you enter into something new, you really have the opportunity to deploy novel ideas, sketch out novel perspectives, novel perspectives that don't bracket out tradition, but seek to seek to mark how tradition can deploy itself otherwise and create another future, a future for future generations. So in this sense, my, my first impressions, as many of my colleagues, was there's a secret, we have to explore it, and we have to engage this secret, this secret, the secret uh, community here in, in, in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia to really give to the world, to really uh, engage itself in the world. And we can test, we can experiment here, which is a great feeling 
for an academic. And I think it's so important for people to be able to visit Saudi in person in order to witness the changes in the kingdom firsthand. Now, there's some big themes at the event this year, everything from space diplomacy, developments in artificial and intelligence and technology as well. In your mind, what is the overarching theme for this year's conference and what do you hope to achieve? Well, that's an excellent question, Katie. I think, you know, this year what we wanted to to do after last year's conference, which was on unpredictability. Uh, this year, what we wanted to do is to rekindle this uh, very uh, long-standing historical debate between scientists and philosophers. What we wanted to do, and this relates back to what I was just saying about experimentation, what we wanted to do is to test again this long-standing relationship between, which has often been uh, heated between scientists and philosophers. We don't always agree on the way of doing things, on the way of thinking about things. We wanted to rekindle this relationship and see what we could come up with. Uh, and, and in a sense, what do I want to achieve? What we want to achieve in this conference is truly the possibility to rethink fundamental philosophical questions, space, time, humanity, in the prism or th through the prism of novel possibilities of thinking for both scientists and philosophers. It's an interesting point to notice that in this conference, during this conference, we've had extremely heated debates between scientists and philosophers. And as I said, we don't agree on a lot of on, on a lot of subjects, we don't agree on a lot of the methodology to approach certain themes or certain thematics. But what we did find out is that we all have a very, uh, a very uh, sustained concern for humanity. Our conference is entitled Knowledge and Exploration, Time, Space, Humanity. What I'm taking away from it, and I know a lot of my colleagues are, both local and international, are taking away from, from this conference, is a true concern, a true, uh, a true worry for the challenge that are facing humanity. And our hope, our hope, that is what we hope to achieve, is that through a renewed, uh, a renewed uh, collaboration between scientists and philosophers, well, we can maybe confront, confront these challenges in a very succinct and very rational uh, manner. Now, the conference is happening at a very interesting and turbulent time, obviously with the pandemic, the economic downturn, the war in Ukraine and natural disasters taking place around the world. What lessons or wisdom do you think philosophy can give us as a guiding light for these very turbulent times? Well, it's an important question and it's true that we live in a world which is fraught uh, by, by, by division, and by and by very very serious and 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 very uh, radical uh, um, uh, challenges. Uh, you've mentioned a few, but there but there are there there are many more. What do I think philosophy can bring? I think philosophy can bring the possibility for us to step back and examine. And I really b believe in the exigency of stepping back and examining all the effects of what we believe can be done. I'll explain myself. I don't think it is possible to simply rehash old formulas about current challenges facing humanity. I think our greatest task as a philosopher is to invent and create novel paradigms to face these challenges which are singular, which are extremely singular and particular. I think philosophy can help us do this. I think philosophy needs to re-examine its relationship to technology, its relationship to science, its relationship to society. This is why our conference is a public conference. It would make no sense to have it uh, clustered away in a university. We need to, to bring philosophy to the general public. We need philosophers to step out 
of academia, strictly speaking, bring out philosophy to the general public, and see how to together reformulate certain of our certain paradigms that have accompanied us throughout our history. I think this is the most the most difficult and important task for academics, philosophers, scientists, historians, psychoanalysts, artists, writers to engage in for the betterment of our humanity, that is for the sustainability of our future. But how do we move these discussions forward and turn them from words into action? This is a very this is a very important question and what what I found quite incredible in this conference is that we had all the philosophers and the scientists uh, engage in finding concrete and effective manners of acting out their theories or their value systems or their ideas. Every conference, every lecture, every panel ended with uh, a, a call, a certain call to action with very concrete and effective manners of deploying uh, the, the ideas that were being stipulated and, 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 uh, and disputed during these, during these lectures and panels. I think philosophy has reached a point in its history where it needs to step out of an abstract understanding of the world or of our essence as human beings. We need now to bring this knowledge into the field of concrete action. This conference, and this brings me back to the to, to my very first answer to your to your first question, this this is what really makes the Riyadh Philosophy Conference, according to me, quite singular. That is, it is a terrain of exploration. It's not a terrain where academics come and deploy their scholarship on who, whoever in the history of philosophy or whichever question or thematic uh, uh, that they are working on. They are really trying in Riyadh to bring these this scholarship into concrete modalities of action. If you ask me as, as a speaker and as the program director of this of this uh, of this uh, Riyadh philosophy conference i believe that this is what makes the true singularity of of this of this uh, uh, of this conference it is to bring through filter through the ideas that we are speaking about into very concrete effective action uh, um, uh, today that's our urgency if you like well, across the world today, and remarkably in Western Europe and North Africa, we are seeing huge ideological rifts and sometimes violent differences in opinion. What is triggering this in your point of view and what is the solution? Well, I mean, this is a, this is a, a huge geopolitical and, and, and philosophical question. Uh, obviously, we live in a world, as I, as I, as I tried to say uh, before, that is that is fraught by 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 differences and by clashes and by confrontations that uh, most of the time end up to be violent clashes. What is important and and what what is important for us uh, here in Riyadh is to focus not necessarily on the dividing elements of our discourses, but really try to bridge gaps between very different types of discourses. You're asking me, where, does, where do these divisions come from? Well, they come from our history. Our human history is traversed by differences. What we are trying to do here in Riyadh is to take in those differences but try to return to the common denominator as human beings in order to redeploy, redeploy, that is, reimagine effective, concrete action which speaks to our history, but which speaks to our history in a manner where it can reformulate our history. That is, reformulate these distinctions, these divisions, these clashes into the possibility of, well, equality into the into the possibility of formulating theories and 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 a concrete action on on uh, uh, freedom on academic freedom and I think this is the place where 
it is happening today in the world. I think Riyadh is showing itself to be one of the places in the world, if not the place in the world, where we are truly seeking to return to this common denominator and reinvent from this common denominator called humanity. Well, certainly is quite remarkable. And in the meantime, while we see all of this happening in the West, as well as the cancel culture being very widespread, we're interestingly seeing things like music and philosophy being reintroduced into the Saudi curriculum. We're seeing cinema houses being opened and things like the Abraham Accords that are taking place in the UAE and Bahrain. In your mind, are we seeing a paradigm shift? I believe we are. I believe we are, Katie, and, and I'm encouraging truly this, this paradigm shift, uh, uh, as you call it. I, I, I believe we are seeing right in front of us uh, a, a paradigm shift. And what you're saying about the cancel culture uh, that, we are, that we are seeing uh, in Europe, uh, as you know, I'm, I'm in Dublin, so I, I, I'm, I'm, I have a, a first row seat to, this, to, to some of the effects of this cancel culture, also in, in, in the United States or North America. What I can say to this is that here, at least, with this philosophy conference, we're trying to counter this cancel culture. I want to make one point clear. We're not seeking to bracket out our traditions I believe in our traditions. I, I believe we need to believe in our traditions. But I also believe that the time has come, and this is what this is what is so fruitful about the conference here, the philosophy conference here, is to reshape our traditions into finding an idea, an inventive idea for the sustainability of our future. I don't believe this finding this idea for a sustainable future can go can 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 be can evolve out of a cancel culture i think that's a very very uh, dangerous path to walk for 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 our humanity what i what i do however believe is in the possibility of reinventing in our traditions novel novel ideas which can honor our traditions and at the same time bring a sustainability of freedom to our future. Now, the conference that has taken place this month has played an important role in shaping the new identity of Saudi Arabia. And while we are seeing important local topics for the kingdom and the region being focused on, there's very much an international flavor as well. The conference itself has been billed as being very international. Tell me, how exactly is this working in terms of the speakers and the topics that you're tackling? Well, the that's a that's a very that's a very good question. You know, this program this program we have over seventy five speakers, and this year I really wanted to maintain a somewhat strong equilibrium between local speakers and international speakers. I believe in this equilibrium. I don't think we're bringing philosophy to Saudi Arabia. That's that's not at all our vision of this conference. The, the vision of this conference is really on the encounter, on the possibility to encounter, on the possibility to bring people together. And bringing people together internationally and uh, locally, that meant for me, bringing the most cutting edge philosophers from the international scene to Saudi Arabia to meet their Saudi counterparts. Now, what is international about this conference? What is international it are is the the not only the speakers coming from uh, uh, um, countries outside of Saudi Arabia, but also from the involvement of international institutions in Saudi Arabia. A whole side of this conference, which may not be visible, but a whole side of this conference is to deploy successful partnerships with Saudi institutions and international institutions. We have accords on the way now with the International Federation of Philosophical Society. We have accords with the university, the Northeastern University in Argentina. We have accords with the university in Mexico, National University of Mexico. We have a very good accord on its way with uh, uh, SOAS, University of London. So we're trying to build, well, we're trying, this is one part of the conference. What we're trying to build by bringing these speakers is really the bridges between 
Saudi Arabia and these international academic uh, uh, institutions. How is it international? It brings inter the, the international in, in, in Riyadh by concretely developing very solid collaborations between Saudi institutions and uh, and uh, international institutions, the ones I've just I've just mentioned. That means people coming, academics coming to Saudi over the academic year, Saudi academics going uh, to these respective universities or research centers abroad during the academic year, building conferences together, building lectures together, building reading groups together, bringing students to come together. That's that's where that's where the international really fits in concretely to to the to this conference. There are the names, but behind the names, there are the institutions working to work together. And I think you're right. It is so important to be able to bring young people into these conversations. Now, you say that the conference is interdisciplinary. Can you tell us a little bit more about this? I was interested to see in the program, there's actually a lot of activations for children and young people. And I think that is such a unique feature of this event. Definitely, definitely. And it brings me back again to this terrain of experimentation. You see, this conference is not a conference where the program is set, you know, three months in advance. This conference was being coordinated right up until the last minute. That is, we were still putting more activations uh, in the conference up, up until the day before the conference. So it's really a terrain of experimentation. And the P4C program, the Philosophy for Children program, uh, has really been a, a, a very integral part of this conference. It's an experiment, it's an experimentation, and it's been highly successful. We're seeing children from age six, seven, all the way to teenagers, 16, 17, engaged in a huge debate program that we've that we've put on, a type of Karl Popper style debate with opposing teams. That's been extremely, extremely successful. So what we're trying to what we're trying to do with this P4C and going all the way up to to teenagers is to welcome uh, Saudi uh, Saudi young people. We'll call them uh, that way. Saudi young people to discover uh, 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 philosophy, discover science, and engage also in with uh, international students that are also present in the conference and see what we can do together that's that's the that's the uh ultimately that's what i mean by experimentation i mean i mean trying to bring people together in such a way that uh we leave our prejudices at the door and we try to invent something together that's what that's what i that's what i really mean about experimentation and p4c philosophy for children is definitely integrated in this program precisely because of this reason. And I think it's so exciting to have them take part. Now, there's quite a few partners involved as well from international universities, as you mentioned before, to local Saudi philosophical organizations. What is their role? Well, their, 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 role, their role is multiple. Their role is multiple. First of all, the local uh, partners, the Saudi Philosophy Association, the, uh, the Saudi Center for uh, Practical Ethics, uh, the Basira Institute, all our local partners were actively involved in the program. That is in, okay, let's invite this philosopher, let's invite this scientist. The collaboration with the Saudi Space Commission also was extremely uh, engaged in developing panels between scientists and, and, and philosophers. Our international partners were also very much involved in our program. So we had uh, SOAS, University of London, uh, collaborating in the in the in the makeup of certain panels. We have the University of Argentina, the University in Mexico, also collaborate in the in the structuring of the program. So each each institution involved, that was like the condition, so to speak, had to get involved in the program. But also, and at the at the same time, because I said their involvement was multiple, also at the same time. What I, as program director, what I wanted 
of each of these institutions is not only that they engage in the constitution of the program or the, the or the uh, planning of the program, but bring people to discuss and engage in exchanges. I wanted people from the Saudi Philosophy Association to go to the World Congress of Philosophy, which will be held in Rome and held by the uh, uh, International Federation of Philosophical Societies. I wanted to, them to bring their people as I was bringing the people from the International Federation um, of Philosophical Societies to Riyadh to meet and to make sure that they consolidate the Saudi Philosophy Association participation in the Rome World Congress. Same thing for the SOAS, University of London. I wanted them to bring a team to meet people from institutions here and engage in uh, uh, staff mobility, uh, uh, faculty mobility exchanges, student student exchanges, send one student from Saudi to London, get one student from SOAS London to Riyadh to study at the King Saud University, for example. So it's it 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 is really axed on on two major trajectories. First, program planning in order to show in the program how we're involved already in collaborations, and then the the second trajectory, which is to uh, to translate this show of collaboration in a program into very active exchange programs. What I really wanted to do is work on this dual trajectory, you know, this dual manner of presenting a program where collaborations are manifest, and at the same time realizing what is shown on the program in very concrete. Uh, uh, collaborations between institutions. I'm not one of these philosophers who suspect institutions. I'm not into the suspicion of institutions. I think we need institutions. We certainly need to question institutions, but we also need institutions. We need institutions to bridge gaps because that's the way that's that's our that's our only manner of expressing our voice right now. So I I really believe that this conference needs and has to work on the shift, the shift of people from Saudi uh, outside and from outside in, into, into Saudi. That's what I was really uh, seeking to achieve in this, in this Riyadh Philosophy Conference. And I think you're right. I think the influence of this event really goes beyond just academic communities with some of the topics this year showing the philosophical link between knowledge and exploration. It's so important today. Dr. Cohen, thank you very much for joining us today on Frankly Speaking. We appreciate your time. Thank you very much, Katie.